So this is Monday, January 27th, and we'll continue with the big battle of fun stuff that we have from there. So, yeah. The speedy version of the knowledge to help those of you who might not have been paying attention on Friday or for dead for whatever reason or another. This is not the full story, it's the Spanish version. The very first thing to exist was chaos. But eventually the big ball of pudding splits the form. Gia. Gia and Uranus. Gia and Uranus. Gia, also known as? Mother Earth. Uranus. Father Sky. And they decide to have kids, and their first set of children are? Fifty. How many of them are there? Three. Nice. Well done. How many heads total? Fifty. Oh, uh, I'm math with that. That's a story problem. They have 150 heads total. There are three of them. Um, the problem was, who doesn't like them? Father Sky. Father Sky, Uranus. Father Sky, Uranus. Why? He pukes when he looks at them. Yeah, they are horrifyingly ugly, so he decides to solve this problem. How does he solve the problem? Throws them in the air. What was the, the pig called? Tartar. Tartar. Tar, uh, the, the Tartarus makes them disappear. Years go by, we decide to have a second set of kids. The second set of kids are called? Cyclops. Cyclops. How many are there? Three. How many total eyes do they have? One. Three. Ah, another story problem. You have a total of three eyes all among them, and then they also are not ugly. They do have a problem. What is their big skill? They like stab. Make weapons. They like stabbing stab. him is not a skill. The fact that they can make weapons. Stabbing him is a drawback. Yes, they can make sharp, pointy weapons out of metal with their bare hands. And how does Uranus feel about that? Annoyed. Annoyed because the whole him getting stabbed thing. So what does he do with them? It is a Tartarus. It makes them disappear. Disappear, and we get to our third, third, third set of children. Who are the third set of kids? Titans. How many are there? Twelve. Twelve. How many total lives do they have? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. I'm watching you guys think. How many boys? Six. Six. How many girls? Six. Nice and done. So that brings in all the Titans. Father Sky is happy. Mother Earth is happy. They're all happy. Things go well. They decide they want to honor their mom and daddy shortly after they come to be, so they create a palace that is as close to uh, dad as they can get while still touching mom. Where do they build this palace? Olympus. And that's where Mount Olympus comes in, because it was still touching Mother Earth, but it was really close to Father Sky, so they build Mount Olympus. And this is where the 12 of them lived for the longest time. It was sort of like their main base of operations. Plus, each one of them built a throne on Mount Olympus. So they could sit and talk to mommy and daddy. So how many thrones are on Mount Olympus? Twelve. That's going to play a big role later, the fact that there's twelve thrones on Mount Olympus. Years go by, things are going quite well, until eventually Mother Earth decides that she wants to have some grandbabies. And she says, I like to have grandbabies. And the titans go, okay, we can make that for you in a minute. And they realize that the six male titans, the only people for them to choose from for their wives are? Their sisters. sisters. Their sisters. So that's where they all get married. Each one marries the hottest sister and make little grandbabies and call this place Kentucky. And so this is how they start populating the world. And so you end up having little grandbabies and great grandbabies and populating the world with all these little titans. Things go well for years and years. Till Mother Earth decides that she wants to have her original babies back. She's like, even if they were humongous uggos and the fact that they got to stabbing people, I'd still like to have them. But who doesn't want to have them back? Father, Father, Father Sky. So if you want to have your children returned and your father will let, and then your husband won't let that happen, how do you solve that problem? Kill him. You can do your best to kill Father Sky. She can't do it herself, of course, because of the whole not having arms like a little Tyrannosaurus Rex. So she has to instead have someone else do it for her. So she goes and talks to each of the six original male titans until one agrees. Who agrees? Kronos. Kronos steps up and says, yeah, I'll go kill him. That sounds like fun. So he agrees to go kill Father Sky. With that, she says, what you're going to do is wait until Father Sky comes down to give me a hug. When Father Sky gives me a hug, that's when you'll attack. And when is it the Sky comes down to give a hug? Night At night time. At night time. And so he waits until nighttime so he can jump up and go booga, booga, booga. And then what weapon does she give him? I don't know. After we hadn't gotten him, she says, and he's like, what do I do? Jump up and like, just poke him in the eyes? And she's like, well, that's a very good plan, but not very effective. What you're going to do is you're going to use a magical weapon called a scythe. She was like this, wee, and pulls out a scythe. She says, it is made out of adamantium, the hardest metal known to ever exist. Those of you who are up on your X-Men lore, adamantium is what Wolverine had in his claws. The shakety, shakety guy is the exact same stuff. They tapped into Greek mythology for it. She goes, I'm going to give you an adamantium scythe, S-C-Y-T-H-E. She goes, what you're going to do is wait till he comes down, 
and then you jump up and you go slashy slashy and it is powerful enough it'll hurt him enough and you can chase him off he's like sounds like a good deal so he wastes that night so father sky comes down hiding behind the mountain he jumps up Whing! and of course father Sky's like ah you scared me what are you doing there he goes nothing Whing! What? what you got the big sharp pointy stick for <laughs> and then it starts going to choppy, choppy, choppy. And Father Sky takes off running and screaming, Ah, kill our kid! And Crono's like, I'm going to get you! And takes off running after him as fast as he can, running and jumping and doing the choppity, 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 <laughs> and doing the best choppity, choppity, as he keeps running. As he does, each little choppity chunk comes flying out of Uranus. And these chunks, when they hit Mother Earth, form new creatures. And they're going to refer back in later stories to this one, where these chunks keep falling out and creating creatures. One of them even becomes one of the Olympians, is formed at this moment when the chunk falls out and hits the ground. Uranus runs until he gets to the edge of the Earth. Mr. Bellamy, you can't have an edge. You can, because the Earth was obviously shaped like a dinner, dinner plate. It was a ball. No, it was a dinner plate. And so he chased him to the edge of this giant dinner plate. Kronos doing the choppy, choppy thing. Uranus screaming, eee, every time he got stabbed. Until he backs up, until his feet are all the way to the edge of the earth. He does the, me, 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 me. And then Kronos keeps coming at him with the whole, choppy, 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 choppy. And right before Kronos can do the final choppy, choppy, Uranus goes, wait! And Kronos stops. What? And Uranus goes, I have something for you. And Kronos goes, I love presents. What is it? A curse! Yeah! And he throws a curse on Kronos and says, You are my child, and you have overthrown me to take my power. One of your children shall overthrow you and take your power. One of their children shall overthrow them, and so on for the end of time. As long as there is a king of the gods, they shall be overthrown by one of their own children. Stomp, stomp, twiggle fingers, make it so. And he's like, No, not a curse. I don't care. And then Kronos comes out with one final chop. Uranus turns, dives off the end of the world, never to be seen again. Some stories say that he just floats away into space, like it's gravity, and he's like, ah, and it's just gone. Other stories say that he just hangs on to the bottom, like that little stalactite just dangles down on the bottom of Mother Earth for years and years. Other stories say that he just boop, disappears. However you look at it, he's gone. And we never see him again, as far as Greek mythology is concerned. He's just, king. What's that? See, that's where we have an issue. Because now, Kronos goes back up to Mount Olympus. And he's like, I declare myself the new king, for I have killed off Uranus. And the guy's like, wait a minute, you killed Daddy? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, okay. They're like, wait a minute, but you also killed the sky. And he's like, yes. They're like, what's up there now? And he goes, the sky. They go, but sky minus sky equals, he goes, sky. And they're like, ooh. That's how Greek math works. <laughs> yeah, we're going to call this one Step Back Sky. But there's a new sky up there, and now it's not a god. Now it's just the sky. If you try to think about it too hard, it'll hurt your brain. So now Kronos is the new king of all of the gods. And everything goes well. The other gods accept him pretty well. And even Mother Earth comes and talks to him. Like, hey, congratulations. That's according to plan. Speaking of which, remember why you overthrew him in the first place. Because why was he supposed to overthrow Uranus? Oh, to get the children, get the children back. He's like, oh yeah, that part. And what are these other uh, things these other kids are talking about? And she gives him directions on how to get down to Tartarus. So he goes down, finds this big passage in the mountains, and goes down into the underworld, finds the, the double doors locking out Tartarus, and like, throws them open, and walks in. He's like, hello! I'm here to free you! And walks in this big pit, and there's this pit, and he walks to the edge, and he's like, my name is Kronos! And I'm here to, oh God, from the island and throws up. He looks in this pit, and these things are humongous. Kronos, compared to the big, ugly monsters, comes up to about the top of their toe. And the cyclops is maybe halfway up their you know, shin. It's about sideways. He's like, Those things are humongous. It's like being next to an Empire State building. And when you look at it, it makes you throw up. Plus, it can run around all over the place. He's like, <laughs> no. He's like, we're not going to release these. They have to stay hidden away forever because they're horrifyingly ugly and frightening. So he just goes, <laughs> and then backs up slowly, and shuts the door and leaves them down there. He goes back up to Mount Olympus. Mother of was like, what happened to the other one? He's like, um, I couldn't find 
watching them. She was like, I was watching. He was like, I don't know what happened. Blah, 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 squirrel. And he just leaves them there and refuses to let them out. Mother Earth is furious, but can't do anything about it. No arms. She's like, oh, I'm strangling you, but I can't get them to get. So she's like, ah. So she decides to just wait and bide her time to see what happens. So now, Kronos is the leader of the gods. Things go by, and he decides he's going to add in some new people to hang out with. So he brings in three of his friends to hang out with him up on Mount Olympus. The first one is a guy by the name of Prometheus. Now, he uses Prometheus because Prometheus is the smartest god to ever exist. Super smart. That's his ability, is the fact that he is super duper smart. What it means in Greek, epi meaning, or in Latin, epi meaning forward, and mephi meaning thought or thinking. And he was forward thinking. He became the advisor of Kronos. He was so smart, he could actually see into the future. He could just sit there and go, don't eat the fish, it'll make you sick. And so he could see into the future. Very helpful. He had a brother by the name of. Epimetheus. Epimetheus was the exact opposite of Prometheus, which means Genius. super dumb. Mr. Prometheus, yeah, that's not a superpower. I agree, but it wasn't really his choice. He was the opposite. Epi meaning actor or backwards, and Epi meaning thinking. So Epimetheus could not see in the future. That's what made him dumb. Um, Mr. Prometheus, yeah, I can't see in the future. Does that make me dumb? No, you're dumb for other reasons. So, you guys can see into the future, you just don't realize you can see into the future. As an example to seeing into the future, here's an example. Let's say that you're at a bonfire, and you're cooking a marshmallow, and you're like, cooking, 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 it's so much fun! And all of a sudden, the marshmallow falls off the end of the stick into the fire. Should you reach in and grab it? No. no. Why? Just your now, did you just see into the future? How would you know that would happen? Because you can go, if I reach in there, sizzle, burn, cripple, ah! Uh, um. So that was you looking in the future to know that you shouldn't do that. Epimetheus didn't have that ability. He'd be like, oh, marshmallow! Oh, God! Marshmallow! <laughs> marshmallow! Ah! And so he couldn't see in the profession. So that was where the dumbness for him comes in. There was no seeing the repercussions for his actions. So he was not real smart. His main thing was he would like run really fast on a helmet and hit a wall. <laughs> and just sit there and giggle. And like, that was fun. He was like, <laughs> special kid. And then our third brother was a kid by the name of Atlas. Atlas wasn't super smart, <coughs> not super dumb. He was medium. Super strong. Super medium. He fit right in the... <laughs> super strong. He was the Hulk of all the gods, the strongest one that was out there. He just ran around going, Atlas smash! With like crush cars and things like that. We'd pick up the other gods and fling them back and forth, like, Beauty God! Like in the eyes and stuff like that. He thought it was awesome. Um, later on, he becomes the general of the Titan army. You've seen pictures of him before with Atlas. If you've seen the TV show 30 Rock with Tina Fey at the very beginning, this is the, the thing that's right outside 30 Rockefeller Center, the TV station, uh, where they do it. The other ones are just other pictures of him. We'll come back to Atlas in a little bit. So now, Kronos is hanging out with them. Things are going well. It was Kronos' idea to come up with humans. He was talking to Epimetheus. He was like, hey, I'd like to create a race of like really tiny gods, like little titans that don't live forever. And when I get angry, I can go down there and just stomp on them and feel them squish between my toes. That would bring me lots of happiness because I have anger issues. I don't want to hit other titans. Prometheus is like, hmm see what I can do. So Prometheus went down to Earth, got some water, mixed it with dirt. When you mix water and dirt, you get mud. mud. And so he mixed mud together, and from there, he just squished out little mud people. Legs, body, arms, head. And once he made these little army of little mud people, he sprinkled on like magic god dust. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And they came to life. I'm a real boy. And they danced around. And they became the new race of people made from mud. They didn't live forever, and the gods would use them whenever they got angry. They would come down to little human villages and just rawr, stomp on them, and they'd have to make new ones. Because part of the problem was they didn't invent girls, just had boys. So this first race of humans was just dudes, and that was it. But it was okay, because there was also only one season, and it was the best season. And that was? Winter. What's the best Summer. season? Summer. Spring. So it was summer, non-stop. Plus, evil had not been invented yet. They actually have to invent evil years later. 
So the fact is you had no chicks, the fact is it was summertime all the time, the fact there was no evil, it was called the golden age of man. It was thought like this perfect time for everything. And it went like this for the longest time of everything going well. And everyone is happy. Except the whole curse thing keeps haunting Kronos. And what does the curse say? One of his children will overthrow him. Now, if you know that one of your children will overthrow you, how do you prevent that curse from coming true? Killing your children. children. Oh, it's even simpler than killing your children. Oh, you I don't have back to you. Eat them. Nice don't have kids. If you know, <laughs> if someone tells you, if you ever touch a pencil, you're going to die, you don't go, the pencil? Because they're like, oh. You just don't touch the pencil. Problem solved with that. Or else it's not going to work. And of course, I know I like, of course, your next solution. Stab the baby? Yes. Always a fun solution, too. Always keep that in your back pocket. But that doesn't work this time. And why doesn't baby stabbing work? Because they're gods. They're gods. You can stab as many babies as you want, but it won't kill them. You're just going to have babies on a stick. Now, it's great for decorating your home, but not so good when you're trying to get rid of them. Now, he also comes up with the idea, I can take the babies and just throw them in the pit of tartars. And like, baby, pit. And toss them in there. And that would be fun, but the problem is, someone keeps trying to release people from the pit of Tartarus, and that would be Mother, Mother, Mother Earth. Earth. He's like, I'll never know when they come out, I'm like paranoid, worrying about all the time, so I don't want to throw them in there. He's like, i got to come up with another solution. But nothing comes from right away. He's like, oh, we'll just wait and see what comes up. And years go by, and eventually his hot sister wife, Rhea, gets pregnant. She's like, Kronos, I'm pregnant. He's like, yay. Months go by. She gives birth. Gives birth to a little baby by the name of Poseidon. And she brings in little baby Poseidon. She's like, look, I got his own blankie. It's got starfish and seahorses on it. He's like, that's adorable. And she brings it in and gives it to him. And he holds the baby and he's like, how am I going to make you disappear? The baby's like, Meh. He's like, exactly. He's holding the baby. He does the baby jiggle walk. You guys have a little baby. Like, the baby jiggle walk. <laughs> he's a little baby jiggle walk trying to get the baby to sleep. And he's like, I got to the baby. And all of a sudden, it comes to him. As he steps backwards, he trips over his own. He's like, ah! He throws the baby into the air, lands on the side. He's like, ah! And then he goes, ah! Right through his mouth. He's like, oh, no. No, salty. And swallows the baby. So Rhea freaks out. She's like, you just ate the baby! He's like, I just, I just ate the baby. <laughs> and he realizes he solved his problem. Because now the baby's in his tummy. Baby can't overthrow him. He's like, this is a perfect genius thing. Except for the whole... Wife freaking out, and she's like, ah, 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 ah. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure it won't happen again. <laughs> He's like, so, and so they have a little fight and some issues and stuff like that. He apologizes, and years go by. She gets pregnant again. This time, she has gives birth to a baby. She still misses baby number one, and she's a little sad. She's like, hey, still missing the other baby, so this one in mourning, we're going to go ahead and dress in all black. So she puts like this baby in like a little black outfit, and his little fingernails black, and stuff like that, a little black baby eyeshadow around his eyes, stuff like that. He's like, why don't I call this one Baby Hades? And she brings in a little baby Hades. She's like, isn't she adorable? And he's like, uh huh. She's like, you want to hold him? And he goes, uh huh. She goes, sit down. And he's like, uh oh. So he has to like sit down while he's holding the baby. He's like, how am I going to get the baby in my mouth now? I can't walk around it. And she's just like staring at him the entire time. He's like, oh, I got you right now. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, new baby smell. <laughs> okay. Tickles your nose like fresh from the factory. <laughs> <He's>, huh? <laughs> no, it's like, no, oh, tastes like Carol. And he swallows a second baby. Oh she freaks out. She's like, you just ate a second baby. Things I never thought I'd say to my husband. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, it went in my mouth. I had to swallow because it was caught back out. I'm really sorry. He eats the second baby. She freaks out. We have issues. Years go by. He does it. Three more times. <laughs> Accidentally eats baby Hera, baby Hestia, baby Demeter. By the time we get to baby number five, Rhea's beginning to think it's not so much of an accident. Because she walks in and he's just like, oh, eating popcorn, popcorn. Hey, baby, popcorn. She's like, hey, what? Come on. She's like, well, I'm sorry. So now she's like, all right, we're going to have to solve this whole my husband keeps eating my baby. <laughs> so she decides to go and talk to her mom for advice. Who is her mom? Mother, Mother Earth. Mother Earth. So she goes down and talks to Mother Earth. She's like, Mom, I'm having a problem with my husband. And Mother Earth is like, yeah, I know what you mean. She's like, my husband keeps getting rid of all my babies. 
mother was like, you preach it, sister. She's like, so what's your problem? What's your husband? She's like, well, my husband keeps eating my babies. The mother was like, okay, that's a new one. All right. Uh, she's like, so what should I do? She's like, well, that's, that's a good question. She was like, well, next, next time you're pregnant, give birth, bring the baby down to me. I'll hold on to the baby for you, and I'll hide it with my caves down here, and that way he can't eat it, and I'll raise the baby for you. Rita's like, well, that's a good idea, but there's a problem. Mother's like, what's the problem? Rita's like, well, when I get pregnant, I'm going to be all kaburp, and when I get burp, he's going to go kaplurp. There's a good chance he's going to notice the kaplurp, kaplurp part. So <laughs> how do I hide that? Mother's like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, here's what you do. Same plan. Bring the baby to me. I'll give you a rock. If you put baby clothes on the rock, draw a little face on it, and you take that back to him, he'll think the rock is the baby. And he's like, no, that's not going to work. He's going to be able to tell the difference between a rock and a baby. It's a good try, Mom. Mother goes, um, your husband's a guy, right? She goes, yeah. Mother goes, it'll work. <laughs> okay. So eventually, she gets pregnant for time number six. And she gives birth to little baby Zeus. And she runs little baby Zeus down to Mother Earth. She's like, hey, here's my baby. Take him. Mother Earth was like, here's a rock. <laughs> Tied her ass arms. And hands her over a rock. She puts little baby clothes on it. Puts a little smiley face. And goes back up to Mount Olympus. And she's like, hon, hey, I gave birth to our new baby. Don't eat this one. That'd be really bad. And walks in. Of course, Kronos watching TV, not paying any attention whatsoever. Click, click, click. Oh, baby. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Click, click, click. Rhea's like, oh, no. You ate my baby. <laughs> and walks away. She's like, oh, my goodness. I'm happy because my husband's an idiot. Kronos is happy. He's like, my wife's an idiot. I just ate her baby. And, of course, Mother Earth was like, I got to keep her baby. So everyone was happy on that one. And Zeus was like, I didn't get eat at all. So it was a win, 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 win situation. Years go by, Zeus is being raised by Mother Earth down on Earth, and being raised thinking that he's an only child. He gets to see his mom on occasion, but pretty much it's just him and his grandmother and the guy that raises him, a centaur by the name of Chiron, C-H-I-R-O-N. A centaur is half man, half horse, horse. horse, and so Chiron helps raise him. Well, Eventually, Mother Earth decides it's time for Kronos' overthrow because she wants him to no longer be king. Because why is she still mad? Didn't release, didn't release the kids. She decides that she's been waiting long enough. So one day, Zeus goes and talks to Mother Earth. And he's like hanging out. He's like, hey, grandmammy. He's like, you know, sometimes I get really lonely. She goes, why? What's up? He goes, well, I wish I had brothers and sisters. She goes, oh, you do? He goes, no. It's just you, me, and mom, and that's it. He's like, I don't have brother and sister. 